Hello everyone. So in this session, we are going to discuss about what is extended transition function. So we know what is a transition function, right? What is a transition function? Uh, any finite automata we take from a state on an input, we have a movement on input, right? So that is called a transition function. So extended transition function in case of uh, DFA, we'll start with DFA. So extended transition function in case of a DFA is uh, from a state on a set of inputs. So rather than like we usually have a transition as from a state on an input, we'll be having a transition, a movement to another state. So this is called del transition function. But what an extended transition function is, we are going to consider a set of inputs. So instead of single alphabet, we'll be having a string as an input. And we are going to find the transitions that is called del cap extended transition function. So we'll be finding it for DFA first. What is extended transition function for a DFA? So where does it reach? It moves to some say state, right? The final state will be there. So that is the final output of it. Okay, so a transition function is from a state on an input, it goes to some place, some other state. Whereas extended transition function is starting from this state on consuming all this input, where does it results to? That is called extended transition function. So here you need to know two, from, uh, two formulas. One is del cap of any state with epsilon. Epsilon is there is no input. Okay, so del cap of any state on epsilon equal to the state itself. Okay, so without consuming any of the input symbol, the state remains in itself. So that is the meaning of it. Okay, and del cap of q comma when you can split the input as w as x a. Okay, where a is the alphabet, the last element, when you can split it as x a, you can rewrite this transition function as del of del cap of q comma x removing the last element out okay so you'll be finding a transition here this results in a state on an input okay so this is how we can relate any uh, transition a normal transition function an extended transition function with the normal transition function Okay, so this is the working mechanism of it. Now I'll uh, take one example and I'll uh, construct and I'll show you how does this extended transition function works for a DFA. So first, uh, I'll just take this in example, Q0, Q1, Q2. One simple example, I'll have this as a final state. This will be the starting state on A, B. It reaches final state. Uh, I'll just take one simple example uh, like a comma B. If my input start with A, B, it goes there and one dummy state. If my input doesn't start with A, B, I'll trace it here. B, Q naught, A, B transition, A, B, and it is a self loop condition. Okay, so this is a DFA, right? Q naught on A, B, we have a transition. Q1 on A, B, we have a transition. Q2 on A, B, we have a transition. And this dummy state also have a transition. Okay, so this is a DFA for uh, the language over the alphabet A and B. All the input symbols here are A and B. And it consists of all the elements that starts with A, B. When the input starts with A, B, your input is accepted. Okay, so now we'll consider one input symbol, one input string. Uh, let me take it as A, B, B or something like this. So when you want to find an extended transition function for this, we can uh, write it as extended transition function of we start from state q naught and with the whole input symbol we can split it using a normal transition function so i can rewrite it as normal transition function of del of q naught comma we need to remove the last element out so we'll be having a b comma b okay so this again in turn we can split it as del of del of del cap of q naught comma a and we can remove b out and we can remove the last b it is already taken out now again next one del of del of del cap of now we have only one input symbol when you have uh sorry it is again del of del cap of when you have only one input symbol we can write it as epsilon and remove the a out 
b comma b so all the inputs are taken out we just have epsilon alone so when you just have epsilon alone we can just combine this okay del cap of any stained on epsilon as input it goes to itself the state itself so this can be written as state q not okay now it is del of del of del of q not comma a b and b okay so what is transition of q not on a now you can look at the transition diagram and you can say to q not when the input is a it goes to q1 so this transition of q not on a goes to q1 and we have transition of transition of q1 and what all the left out input we have b here and b here right so you have del of q1 on b q1 when the input is b it goes to q2 state comma b and you have only one del left and and the transition of q2 on b q2 on a and b it is a self loop condition it goes to q2 okay so this is how an extended transition works extended transition takes an input as a whole in rather than a single alphabet okay it takes an input as a whole and find all possible transition so now starting from the starting state we are able to after processing all the input symbol as a b b we can reach to final state as q2 okay so any language accepted by dfa can be defined as language acceptance of dfa a language can be accepted by dfa can be written as del cap of starting from the starting state with consuming all the input symbol if it results in the destination that is your final state okay so any one of the final state then the input is accepted so that is how we define the language acceptance now here we have taken one example after uh, like starting from the state starting state we have find that extended transition function for it and finally it results in q2 and q2 is a final state it means that the language is accepted by the dfa okay so this is how we define a language acceptance of a deterministic finite automata and this is the extended transition function for a deterministic finite automata